In this video, I'll show you how to linearize your graph to show the relationship between your independent and dependent variable from your data. Okay, so let's start with why do we linearize? And one of the best ways for me to explain this is anybody can fake a curve. If it's a straight line, it's straight. There's no kind of straight, sort of straight. It's either straight or it's not. But as I'll show you, your curved lines can be kind of close. And how do you know the difference between randomization or an actual curve? Okay, so let me use this data from a student of mine many years ago. What they did is they used a toy car with a spring inside and they pulled it back a certain number of centimeters, let it go and hit a second car and they measured how far the second car would move. Remember, this kind of data I would not want to see in my IA or my lab report because I don't have consistent number of, um, of decimal places here, so I don't have consistent precision in my data. I really do. These should have a decimal zero, but Logger Pro does not leave those in. Okay, so my independent variable is the pullback distance of the toy car. And my dependent variable is the distance the second car moves. Now if you take a look, I've got some data. Now there's a point right here that seems to be hiding. And I really recommend that you make sure that we can see all points um, of your data. So you can see I just changed the axis there to make it obvious. I'm going to select my points here. And I'm going to go up to Analyze, Curve Fit, and I'm going to make a linear line the best fit. So let's take a look. Oh, there it went again. Is that a straight line or not? Is it just due to random variations? Or do I really have a curve? Now I'm going to suggest to you that it's not random there is an actual curve. Here's some of the things that I look at. If you look, my beginning point is above the line. And then all of these are below. And I go above the line again here. That suggests to me that really is a curve. And the straight line isn't correct. Um, I don't have our error bars in here. Um, but I think if I did, you would still see that we would have that general shape. Now, if you take a look, this shape probably looks like it's going to be, well, let's check it out. Maybe it's a parabola, maybe not. Let's go up to Analyze, and let's do some checking around first. Analyze, Curve Fit. Now, take a look. We've got lots of possibilities down here. Let's try the quadratic. Try Fit. Hmm, maybe. Now, some of you might be saying, Ms. Henderson, I just learned this in math class. We're just going to go right here, look at the correlation value, and the closer it is to 1, the better it is. But, remember, this is physics. We're math with purpose. To be honest, if you don't have a reason for a different equation, then you really should stick with proportional, linear, quadratic, perhaps a sign, or if you were doing um, option B4, damped harmonic down here at the bottom, perhaps um, a log, um, an exponential. Other than that, you really need to make sure you have the science, the theory, to back up why you chose a specific equation. So let me show you what can happen. Cubic. Look, the value is getting even better. But do I really think that's going to happen? How about quartic? Try fit. Look, it's perfect. Do I really think there's a scientific reason why it's going to increase right here and then have a decrease and another increase again? That's because there is some variation. And by just randomly choosing the best fit, I'm ignoring my variation. So let me go back to quadratic try fit and let's see the big graph 
Okay, so we think this is a quadratic then, a parabola shape. So let's use this data and create a new graph that will actually show we have a quadratic relationship. I'm going to get rid of this line of best fit for now. And if it was a parabola, that's the equation y equals x squared. So if I graph y versus x squared, and x squared was on my x-axis, I should actually get a straight line. So I could go and calculate all of my x values, my independent variable, and square it. Or sometimes we've got a lot of data. Let's get Logger Pro to do it for us. So I'm going to go up to data, a calculated column. And this will be, I'm just going to write x squared, short name x squared. Well, how am I going to do that? I'm going to take the data that's from my x-axis, that's my pullback distance of toy car, and I need to square it. And now you can see here Logger Pro has calculated all of those for me. Now one thing I want to point out is in your lab report or your IA, you should show this original graph, and then the linearized graph as well. Now, I don't want to get rid of it for that reason then. So if I go up to Insert, Graph, here we go. I've got another graph that I can use. Now, remember I've talked about this before. This is like another piece of paper on top of the other one. If I right-click or two-finger click if you're on a Mac, I can then go move it to the back. It didn't disappear. It's just the piece of paper underneath this graph right here. I'm going to move it to the back. Oh, there's the little one I just added in. I'll make it bigger so that I can see it. And down here on the x-axis, I now want x squared. I'm going to move this over again so that I can see that last point. It's a pretty good line of best fit. Oh, that's why. It has x squared versus x squared. Of course that would be a straight line. What should be over here? Should be the distance the second car moves. So there's my y, my dependent variable, versus x squared. Now let's do that line of best fit. Let's draw a line in there. Analyze. Curve fit. Remember, I'm using curve fit rather than linear because there may be a um, y-intercept and if there is you can see I've got some right here that tells me there's probably a systematic error. Now if I take a look here you might say Mrs. Henderson wait I've got some points above and below again but last time we had above all of them below and then above again and if you take a look now I've got some above and below, and I don't have that same pattern. This would be my linearized graph. This is showing me that now my y axis is proportional to my x axis, which means y is directly proportional to x squared. In the last example, I used a parabola because it was a shape that most people recognize. Um, but I have some different data here. So let's go through this again. First of all, I'm going to click and I'm going to um, select all of my data and let's just go and do a linear line. And we have to say to ourselves, is this linear or is there something else going on? I have a similar pattern from before that I've got below, below, above, above, below. So it's just inverted from what we had with our parabola. So this leads me to believe that no, this is not a straight line and that the points are above and below due to variation. This leads to this table here. You see down below, um, it comes from something I got a long time ago, back in the year 2000, um, experimental design and graphical analysis of data uh, by Rice. I'll put the link in the information down below. Now, 
I like this because it gives us the graph shape here. It also gives us how to describe the relationship, how we would need to linearize our graph, what we actually need to do, and then what does the model actually look like in an algebraic form. So let's take a look here. There's a couple I really want to point out. First of all, notice this one, a straight line. What that means is for x, my independent variable, it doesn't matter what value I have, I keep getting the same value for my dependent variable, the y value. That tells me there's actually no relationship between those two variables. So I can say as x increases, y remains the same. So it already is a straight line, no relationship. A linear relation would be shown here in this graph. Straight line. As x increases, y increases. One thing I want to point out is you can only use the phrase directly proportional as if that straight line goes through 0, 0. Again, neither of these have any modification required. This is the one we did in example 1. And now this is the one I have here in example 2. What does it tell me to do? It says as x increases, y squared increases proportionally. So what I'm going to need to do in this case is I'm going to square my y values and plot that versus x. And if this is correct, I should get a straight line. Okay, so we're back to our Logger Pro data. And you can see here that shape that I'm talking about. It's curved and it's pointing slightly a curve downward. So the mathematical model sheet told me to square the y-axis. So I'm going to go up to data, new calculated column. What do I want to do? I want to take the column on my y-axis, my dependent variable. In this case, it was time. A lot of the experiments we do, time is our independent variable. But in this case, the student has changed the length of the string and measured the time it took. So this isn't the correct way. So now I've created my calculated column. Let me just rename that. And my short name will be T to exponent 2. And on my y-axis, I now want to see time squared. So let's see what we've got now in terms of having a straight line. Now you see I've got some above and below our graph. And if I had error bars, it would probably show that these would be within my um, um, error. If you take a look, not only do I have a straight line, it's given me what the slope is. So that will be the coefficient in my equation. Okay, for our third example here, I've got some data from Verify and Boyle's Law. The independent variable has been the pressure and the dependent variable is the volume. Remember, you can use Logger Pro to make your units in the proper format meters cubed with a superscript 3. All right, so we've got the shape here. What we need to do is go back to our mathematical model sheet. Here it is, and say, which of the shapes do we have? You can see down here I have an inverse proportion. It is a curve. The proper name for it is a hyperbola. Okay, so I'm going to, just for completeness, show you that if I put a straight line here, that's not matching our data. I do want to point out with the line that's shown on the graph right now. That is not called an inverse relationship. If I had data that I was able to get this black line for, it would be linear. It just happens to have a negative gradient. I see a lot when I mark IAs that students have called this shape with the red dots a um, incorrect name. So, what did it tell us to do? 
on our mathematical model sheet, it says that is, this is a graph of y versus 1 over x. Okay, so in my Logger Pro, I'm going to go up to Data, Calculate a Column. What do I need to do? 1 divided by my x, which is pressure. I'm going to 1 over pressure. short name one slash p and then let's graph on our x-axis one over pressure I'm going to have to get a new automatic axis and here you can see that I've got a straight line now it's not starting at zero zero according to here if I really want remember option graph options I can do auto scale larger from zero for both my x and my y axes. And now I'm going to select my data and draw a linear line the best fit. You can see that I do have a straight line. You can't fake a straight line. It either is or it isn't. Okay, let's go back. Some people might say, well, what if I made a mistake? What if I looked at my data and I thought that was a parabola instead of my inverse? I don't know why, but let's say it happened. You made a mistake. If you remember, that was y versus x squared. So let me go data, calculate column, and let me put x squared here. On my x, I have pressure squared. And now let's do volume versus pressure squared. Now, if you notice, I don't have a straight line. So that means if you try any of these techniques and you get it wrong, you don't get a straight line, which is why we like this idea of linearizing. It's a proof of showing you have the right equation. You have the right trend to your data and you haven't, you know, applied something mathematically incorrect. So I hope showing you these three different examples will help you with your data. It is expected in a physics IA or a physics lab report that you take and you prove the relationship of your graph.